So I wanted to make a follow-up on my previous video on film emulations for Canon cameras. And in this one, I wanted to focus a bit more on the post-processing. Because even if these pictures do look great straight out of camera, there's still a couple of things that I like to do every now and then in post to bring it up a notch. Now, it's been raining constantly for the last couple of days here in Sweden, but I so wanted to try a couple more of these film simulations or emulations, whatever we decide to call them. What do you call them? Let me know in the comment section down below. Film simulations or emulation. So I installed three new ones, and the first one is the Kodak Portra 160 NC. And the NC is short for natural color and it's used or was used a lot for portraits as the name kind of gives away and there's also a vc version of this one vc as vivid colors if you want a slightly more oomph for saturated prints the second one is the agfa rsx2 100. i like this one for shots with lighter greenery in them and i think it's a slide film only I think it's a bit warmer than some of the other ones, especially if you compare it to the Porta on this one. If you look at the uh, reeds in the background, they look a bit warmer or more yellowish, I think. And the third one I picked was the Kodak Ektachrome. Yes, this one is also one of those that's been used by National Geographic, especially for the times when they used Kodachrome and Kodachrome wasn't fast enough for different kind of low light situations and stuff like that. But just like the Kodachrome, it's also been used for cinematography. Inside Man and Three Kings were shot on Ektachrome. But yeah, let's do some editing. Uh, but before we start, I just want to say that all of the overlays and assets we're going to use in this edit are free ones, and I will do my best to link to everything down below in the description. So I've got one of each simulation here. And by the way, if you're editing on a tablet or smartphone, stick around because I'll show you how you can get the same result with a free app. So this is the Agfa. Nice looking deep greens here. And we've got the Ektachrome. Oh, it's looking good. And here we've got the Portra. Nice bokeh. And all of these are straight out of camera. Now, I shot all these in the morning and I had my camera set to daylight white balance because all of these films are or were daylight balanced. So I think I'm going to leave the white balance as is. These colors kind of remind me of that Wolverine movie, Logan when we're up playing Lumberjacks in Canada. So let's do a quick edit for Instagram, and I'm not joking when I say quick. Let's grab the Agfa since it's vertical, and let's start by cropping it to 4x5 because, yeah, Instagram. And let's adjust it a bit. Some rule of thirds. Yeah, this is close to cheating, but here we go. Head over to Adjustments and Color Lookup. Now select load 3D LUT and I want to use the F8700 LUT from I Would Like To Be A Pony. It's part of their free LUT pack and it'll give us some of that nice teal and orange tone. Pick the standard version and boom. Okay, let's dial that back a bit. And done. Now I think this looks good enough to post. Maybe we could do a quick little curves adjustment. Hit Control M. Nice little S curve. And done. Since we're in Photoshop, let's add some dust and maybe a light leak. Bring it in. Adjust the size to cover the entire thing. And let's change the blend mode to lighten and let's do the same thing with the light leak bring it in set it to screen mode and now how easy was that So if you're editing on a tablet or smartphone, you can use the app 3D LUT to add LUTs to your footage. Load your picture and head over to LUTs and Editors Pick, and you'll find some of the LUTs from I Would Like To Be A Pony. Let's 
adjust it with a slider and done. It's a great way of kind of upping your editing skills when it comes to mimicking film look is to look at tons and tons of pictures taken with actual film. This will definitely help you develop and improve your edits when it comes to mimicking film. Now, don't forget to subscribe because who wants to be bothered with trying to remember a weird sounding Swedish name like Thomas Fransson? Let YouTube do that for you by hitting subscribe. And maybe, just maybe, consider hitting that thumbs up button as well while you're down there. And speaking of Swedish, did you know that headphones in Swedish is called hair horns? Well, with that said, I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Hej då!